In the beginning, the earth was without form and void. But the sun shone upon the sleeping earth. That's it. That's that. The sun okay. shone on it, and then now you're a chieftain. Let's play with seven civilizations. We are, of course, going to be the Babylonians. Hammurabi. That's right. Hammurabi, you have risen to become leader of the Babylonians. May your reign be long and prosperous. The Babylonians have knowledge of irrigation, mining, bronze working, ceremonial burial, pottery, and roads. Very nice. All right, so here we are in our little uh, caravan. And uh, you can see we have to find a suitable site for a city. And uh, this is actually a really good spot because we're right next to a little horse. And a water supply. And That's a water important. supply. So we're going to go back up. And we're going to found a city. Oh, wait, B for Babylon. Each of your cities can build additional cities. Yeah, whatever. We know how to play Civ. Come on. Babylon, founded in 3960 B.C. And then we turn it into a bunch of little huts. But we got a main street with a corner. All right, so we are going to build a militia so that we are protected from nature. We're going to end some turns here. Ooh, what should we research? The alphabet? I think we should learn how to ride horses before we learn how to write. All right, let's wait a few more turns. All right, we got our first unit here. Now, most people like to, you know, fortify their city with their first military unit to keep them safe. Let's not do that. Let's just explore the local countryside. So we're going solo. We're going solo. But we found a little uh, hut with valuable metal deposits worth 50 currency. And I think our other... Uh, so, whoa, whoa. so we established currency before, at the beginning of civilization. I found a pile of things worth money. And uh, exactly what money is, is TBD. The Babylonian wise men discover the secret of horseback riding, and uh, they're really into the Greeks right now, well ahead of the time. Horseback riding. Horses are believed to have been the first. Yeah, whatever. All right, so now we can build uh, horseback infantry, or not infantry, cavalry. <laughs> Let's research the alphabet now. Hey, another hut. More money, man. Early settlers had it. It was easy for them. Location, location, location. That's right. Although we seem to be in the middle of like a desert. So less location. Wait a minute. Am I exploring Africa right now? Yep. We're in the middle of uh, Saudi Arabia. We just unleashed a bunch of barbarians. They died. And uh, let's go see what's going on over in Afghanistan. Another hut. All right. I think people are getting tired of this. Hello, and welcome to the Beamdog Friday stream, where we talk about Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Planescape, Torment, Siege of Dragonspear, Neverwinter Nights, Never Winter Nights, and uh, a few other games here and there. My name is, of course, Philip Daigle, and I am joined by one Jonathan Hill, the product owner for Neverwinter Nights, Enhanced Edition, I should say. Enhanced Edition. Jonathan, tell me about Neverwinter Nights, Enhanced Edition. What is this product? Uh, it is Neverwinter Nights, and we have enhanced it. For everyone out there and ourselves, because we love Neverwinter Nights, we do and love Winter Nights. basically we've made it so that multiplayer is now a thing again. Uh, we've done a lot of graphical enhancements. Uh, we've fixed some audio, and uh, basically we've been adding stuff to the workshop. Uh, Neverwinter Nights is uh, available on Beamdog and Steam. It's an all refreshed version of the game. The multiplayer works. Uh, we got the workshop, like Jonathan was saying. It's a fantastic experience, and guess what? It comes out on March 27th. That's right, on the 27th next four days. week, four days from now. You will be able to buy and play this game on Steam. You will be able to see your friends on Steam, and you'll be able to say, Biff, I'm going to join your game through this handy-dandy Steam overlay. But what if I don't have a friend named Biff? Well, then you're out of luck, and I hope bad things happen to you. Could I find a friend named Biff on Steam? Well, actually, you could, and it's quite easy because the Steam multiplayer features make managing your friends uh -huh. list uh, not a giant pain in the butt. So uh, we're quite excited about that. Now, in addition to uh, making the multiplayer work again, we've been doing a lot of other stuff, too. I think uh, we've done tons and tons and tons and tons of improvements uh, to the security, the, mo the modability of the game, uh, the visuals. 
what you can do with mods is now massively expanded. Uh, we added a bunch of cool frame buffer effects. So we've got ambient occlusion. Um, depth what do we field. got? Depth we got field some effects. depth of field. We got some color and contrast. W vibrance. It's a beautiful game. Neverwinter has never been getting, so vibrant. It's getting more beautiful by the day. It is. Yes. And also on the Steam Workshop side of things, people are adding more content and That's baking, right, yeah. basically extending it beyond. Actually, how about uh, as you tell us about what's coming up for this week for Neverwinter Nights, I'll uh, take a gander through the workshop so we can actually see some of the stuff that's up there. Yeah, so we're going to be, like as Phil was saying, Neverwinter Nights goes live for sale on Steam on March 27th. We're going to be doing another live stream on Tuesday. That's going to be a two-hour special, and we'll have a number of guest stars. Trent will be back. That's um, so we'll pretty much upgrade from plastic knives to, you know, Trent-built knives. So wh where is Trent right now? Trent's down at GDC. What's he doing at GDC? Just hanging out, being a kid. Just hanging out, being a kid. Yep. That's what the what more could you want? Just sitting there eating Apple Jacks. Get, getting selfies with, you know, fans. That's this guy. No, Trent and Cameron are both down at GDC right now, and they're lining up deals, and they're getting stuff set up for us for the next year. And uh, I think they're coming back from GDC with one of those sacks that has the dollar sign on it. And they've got the little mask, and they're going to come in the door and <laughs> put it down in front of us and say, make games. No, that's Hamburglar. Oh, mm. well... He's a pretty cool guy, too. So in the workshop, uh, if you're looking at my screen here, you can see uh, we've recently uploaded that uh, cool Hall of Justice that we showed off uh, last week. You'll be able to grab it in the workshop, pull it down, and take a look at it in-game yourself. So that includes all new uh, models and textures for this area. And as well, you'll be able to uh, see this cool little dude here. Um, as an example of some of the upgraded character models that we're working on. That's stuff that's going to go in the workshop. So Beamdog is currently working on all sorts of like HD materials and content to test things out to see what the engine can do. And then we're pushing all of that into the workshop so that if you want to come grab the visual upgrades to the game and really give it a new look, you'll be able to optionally do that in the workshop. But if you want the original classic Neverwinter experience, it will always be available to you and uh, it'll be what you re remember and recall. Yeah, that's that's key point. So the general philosophy with Neverwinter Nights is we do not want to break backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. We're all the the stuff that we're doing and putting into the workshop right now basically coexists with existing content. You can basically grab it, throw it into your override directory, or just hit the subscribe button, and it just enhances some of the existing graphics. Right now, as Phil said, we've got the tile set. Uh, this morning, we also uploaded the, the generic male human with studded leather that you saw in the stream last week, uh, but that's now in the workshop, so people can download that, pick it apart, look at how the shaders are working, and pretty much just play with it. Use it in your mods, show us how it works. And even beyond the stuff that we've added, if you take a look into the workshop here, there are some crazy mods that people have made. Uh, for example, this one I'm looking at right now, it's part of the uh, community expansion project. And uh, just the level of detail and the stuff that you can have in your environments once you grab these packs is crazy. And it goes so far beyond what I'm sure Trent originally envisioned for what was possible in Neverwinter. But um, really what we're after is we just want to open this up more, let you do more crazy things like this. Uh, raise the bar as to what you can accomplish. And I think we're starting to see that. Um, if you take a look at the workshop, like this Project Reforge thing is pretty cool. Somebody's redoing all the weapons. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what people do when the game is out and everybody has access to the workshop. But uh, it's looking really, really good. And as well, I think we have a new build coming in the very, very near future. Yep. So we have a new build coming this afternoon. Okay. Um, so people out there with their persistent worlds and things like that can start migrating their servers over the weekend so that when people show up on Tuesday to play, you guys have it ready for them. Yeah. Now, before we start getting into the actual features of this upcoming build, we have a little bit more news to go over. So uh, for Beamdog, we, uh, it's the last day of the Siege of Dragon Spear Collector's Edition sale. So if you haven't purchased it yet and you want a big hunk of wood that you can use to beat yourself or your friends, family, um, you can order one from us. It's full of uh, software. It's got books and manuals inside. It's great. Uh, there's also a game in there. So grab the Siege of Dragon Spear Collector's Edition. It's on sale right now for $99.99, which is as close as we could get to $100 without scaring people off. 
Uh, Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition is now available on Twitch. That's right, Twitch has a, a digital distribution platform. And if you're uh, watching this in the Twitch client right now, you could actually go buy the game and download it. So uh, PST's up there now, and uh, later this year, we're probably going to be throwing up other Infinity Engine games on there. So they will be available in yet more locations for you to enjoy. Um, on GOG right now, there's actually a huge sale with all of the Beamdog titles. So if you head over there right now, you can pick up uh, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate 2, Planescape for a huge discount. So uh, thank you, GOG, for running that sale. Go check it out. And, uh, ooh, this is an exciting one. So April 1st, which is, of course, Easter Sunday, um, I will be doing a stream with some friends, including one Holly Conrad, who you may recognize from D&D fame. Uh, she runs uh, Trapped in the Birdcage, I believe, which is a Planescape uh, tabletop game that airs on the D&D Twitch channel. I think it's pronounced Burb. Burb, right, sorry. Trapped in the Burb Cage. Um, so Holly's going to be joining me on April 1st with uh, our own Alexi, and we're going to be talking about uh, a special project that Beamdog has been working on. And uh, speaking of Holly, we hear that her D&D character Strix is going to be showing up in Codename Entertainment's Idol Champions, which is another D&D game on Steam. So congratulations, Holly. You're showing up everywhere, and uh, that's a cool thing to be doing. And, uh, ooh, some other news regarding... Uh, Siege of Dragonspear on iOS. We're going to be pushing out a hot fix in the very near future. Right now, you can import your character from Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition to continue your adventure. But there's a bit of a bug with importing your entire party, um, and that's kind of a big feature, so we're going to fix that up right away here. Uh, Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 both hit number two in the uh, top Google Play paid apps. So A, wow, and B, screw you, Minecraft. Um, we were quite pleased with that. We had a pretty successful sale. I don't think we've ever gotten that high before, but, uh, well, when you jet, you jet all the way. And last but not least, uh, never, or sorry, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale 2.5 is still in the works. We're pushing out those localization updates still. So we were a little held up with the upcoming release of Neverwinter Nights, and we had to do some emergency fixes for Icewind Dale on Android. So that uh, delayed us a little bit with these loc updates, but they're still coming. Uh, Baldur's Gate loc update is testing right now. If everything goes well, we'll release it very, very soon. But 2.5 is going to get wrapped up uh, in just a few weeks here, and it's going to be fantastic. Um, and before we get into Neverwinter Nights, uh, why do some paladins prefer chainmail, Jonathan? I don't know, Phil. Why do some paladins prefer chainmail? Because it's holy armor. Because there's holes in the chainmail. So why does everyone love hit points? Hmm. Because of the life of the party. Can we stop there for now? No. As the patron rejected the offer for coffee, the bartender then followed up the question with yawn tea instead. We'll be here all week, folks. All right, let's play no, Neverwinter Nights. No, no, Nights. we won't. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to get uh, my Neverwinter Nights set up here. Jonathan has uh, gracefully already set up a server for me. Graciously, I should say. Also gracefully. Both, I would say. It was indeed both. I'm just kind of monkeying around in Prelude because... Some of the changes that we did with the uh, the Hall of Justice, you know, some of those changes are kind of propagating through, and I just kind of get sidetracked looking at pretty pictures. I get sidetracked looking at pretty pictures pretty often. People get mad at me about it, but, you know, whatever. So, uh, all right, I'm going to join your game. Let's see, join internet, no, LAN game. Let's see, what do we got here? We are on a LAN today. Now, that being said, even if you were on a LAN, I'm not and we're running this game, that. someone can join I'm gonna this. I'm going to use the Steam overlay to join you. And uh, one of our developers, uh, Bernard, uh, who's off in Germany, I was doing some testing at home on my LAN for Neverwinter Nights, and he just happened to be up at, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning in, in Germany, and he basically joined my game uh, via the fr Steam friends list, and it kind of freaked me out at first, because I'm like, shit, I wasn't testing for that, and it works. So that was a happy surprise. All I was testing for was LAN play. Fair enough. So I started a LAN game. And internet people can join you if they're on your friends list. All right, I will have to create a character. So let's look at Jonathan's screen for a while as he wanders around. I'm just checking out the training halls. Show us the new training halls, Jonathan. These aren't new training halls. These are the training halls that we've all loved and played and gone through once, and then we pretty much jump in from there. Um, Actually, uh, let's start a new server. 
How about that? Yep. Do you want to start a server? And I will join you. I will start a server, and you can join me. Yes. So one of the other things, too, for people that have played Neverwinter in the past that you may have noticed that we've pulled out is we pulled out some of the options for audio uh, because what we've done is we've now actually basically implemented it so it will use your system settings. So if you have 7.1 headphones set up and you play Neverwinter Nights, it's going to default to a 7.1 configuration. So there's a lot of improvements that we've made there. So positional sound works better than ever. And, you know, again, if you've got, you know, sweet headphones like that, pop in, stand in circles, walk around, listen to where the sound's coming from, where it's going, All where right. you were. I'm going to rig up my game here. But in the meantime, how about uh, we give away a T-shirt while uh, these people get set up? All right, so we're going to give away a T-shirt. And, of course, everyone knows how this works. If you're in the audience watching the stream, you're automatically entered to win a T-shirt. And uh, the winner of this T-shirt is Taro Redhand, Tarot Redhand, Taro Redhand. Taro. Tar Ot. No wait, Taro Treadhand. These jokes never get old, old folks. Uh, question from the audience: Jonathan, are you a developer for Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition, or are you a developer on a different project? I am the developer on Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. I am also art coordinator, and at this point, you know, project director on Neverwinter Nights. Yeah, so uh, the way that we work the Neverwinter Nights team is that Jonathan is the product owner, uh, director kind of guy, and basically Neverwinter Nights is his baby. Trent is around in uh, advisory capacity because he made the game originally, and he's always going to have tons of information about it. But Jonathan's the guy with the whip, and he's hitting people across the cheek and ass and making them work and create the game. And uh, good for you, Jonathan. I appreciate it. Yep, and you know, also on the development side of things, I'm also spending a fair bit of time on the Discord rooms because we have a number of those where we're directly interfacing with the community, kind of getting the feedback on basically the shader side of things, graphical improvements that we're making, stability. We're basically wired into the community, and our advisory board has pretty much got us to this point as well, is we've been in development for Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition for couple years now and then we've always worked directly with the community so they can test it basically give us the features that they want and those are the improvements that we're also making on the tool set side of things so we can pretty much give Neverwinter Nights another 15 years. How many uh, additional years have we given Baldur's Gate? I think it's... I think we're eight seven, years now. Eight years now? Yep. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, so Neverwinter Nights is a long-term project for us. So up until now, we've been doing this uh, Head Start program for Neverwinter Nights, which basically means that you can get involved with... Uh, sorry, a box was just delivered to me. I'll deal with this in a moment. Uh, it means that you can get involved in guiding the development of the game. So we've actually got a Trello board that's going to be continuing to go after the release of the game that lists basically our roadmap of stuff that we're going to be working on. Um, and that's going to continue to roll forward as Neverwinter Nights development continues. I'm rolling um, up a new character, so you just right, keep you talking for a second, and then I'll be in thing. there. Um, so yeah, you're going to see all sorts of new features for the engine. You're going to see new capabilities. Um, we're very, very interested in producing new modules and stuff like that, so stay tuned for announcements and that sort of thing. Now, like Baldur's Gate, uh, obviously what we do with the game depends heavily on how successful it is. Our hope and assumption is that you know people love Neverwinter Nights and it will be very, very popular and we can do a lot of things with it like we were able to do with Baldur's Gate. Um, so we're, we're pretty confident in, in this game. So in this new build that is coming this week, in fact, right now for some people, um, what are uh, some of the fixes that we've done? Or actually known issues that we've re resolved since the last uh, build? Oh, you went over no. tell me. Oh, no issues. There are no issues. Everything's great. Uh, no. Um, one of the things that we've actually added into those that were, that were on the Head Start program is we've now added the 2x scaling at 1080p. Um, so that's in. Uh, there's a couple screens in there that the alignment's going to be off. We're working on those fixes. But for the most part, if a button happens to be sitting off screen, we're basically recommending right now switch back to 1x scale to click the button that you need to, then go back to 2x. We're aware of it. We're fixing it. Um, now, the other fixes that we've done is we can now copy and paste inside of dialogue options. So this is really good for the Persistent Worlds uh, players. Cool. So you can basically have a sideboard with your notes, copying and pasting them in. 
Ooh, uh, so that audio stuff that was really ticking me off, that's all resolved now, you were saying? Yes. Yeah. Um, I've got surround sound. I like surround sound in games. and That popping was killing me, man. But you fixed it. Thank you. I didn't fix it. but Well, someone did. We appreciate Thank you. everyone that works in this project. Thank you, Zach. Uh, um, what else do we got? So there's the camera issue for drive mode. Yep, uh, so that now. hitches up and fixed. Um, oh, yeah, and last week, for those of you who weren't watching, we unlocked the camera bounds in the I&I. &I. So if you go into your Neverwhere I&I, &I, you can change it. So that means that you can make your camera go super far out or super close in, so you could enable a first-person mode. Um, I'm just giving Jonathan a little uh, change in game here. If you take a look at my screen, I'm going to give him some money so he can get his adventuring career started. I want all the money. All right, we're going to... Uh, I'm giving you a single coin. Keep the change, kid. All right, so we're both in game. What do you want to do? Should we uh, go through this tutorial, speed through it? Let's speed through the tutorial. All right. So uh, what are some of the new features of this new build? I see that we've got some uh, lighting and normal mapping on static objects. Objects is much better now. Uh, yeah, so we don't have normal and spec in these areas here, but the the lighting model has been improved in general okay. uh, throughout the game. So what did you uh, change about it? Um, basically, it's kind of a shift from some of the vertex lighting, and now we have pretty much overall better lighting. Okay. That's that's a little bit technical for me. That's where I would have to look at Jason Knipe and say, hey, Jason, explain this to me. Now, as I understand it, um, when we introduced shader support, we basically recreated the original Neverwinter lighting using shaders? Yeah, so it's... Again, we don't break that backwards compatibility, but we've kind of split things so that we can have old content and new content kind of running around simultaneously. Um, if you were to actually zoom in on my character, Phil, you'll actually notice that I have the head. Well, where are you? There you are. I'm over here. Vichan Lions Banal. That's an unfortunate name. So, if you were to come in on my head, you'll actually see that that is the updated head that we have in the Steam Workshop. Right, so on my screen, I see the original head, but ah. on Jonathan's screen, oh, he's got the new head. Because I have a different MDL file in oh. my override than what you have. Yeah, so this is kind of our, us illustrating that backwards compatibility is king for us. Um, it's deeply important to us that you're able to play the original game and the new content and seamlessly transition between them because there is, what, a decade and a half of user-created content out there that if we broke would be the dumbest thing to do in the universe? Yes. Okay, yeah. So don't break backwards compatibility. With so this is an course. example right now where... I've got my, you know, high resolution head because my computer's better than yours. Look at Mr. Or I happen MSI to like over it. here. I also have an MSI laptop, so I don't have fancy stickers cuz I peeled them off cuz oh, So that's me. the difference between these machines. I'm going to well, peel this you know what? i7 sticker <laughs> off. Go to hell and tell. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a kind of an example where I can be running newer content and you can be using the original content and we can still play. We can still be friends. We can still be friends even though we shouldn't be. But mine looks better. But yours does look better and I'm jealous. How do I get these incredible features, Jonathan? Do I have to go to the workshop and then subscribe to these items? Well, thanks for answering that question for me, Phil. But yes, indeed. You could go to the workshop and hit subscribe. I guide the conversation. Yes, it would be the good place. Whatever. Alright. Okay. Well, <laughs> question for the audience. <laughs> will it be possible to add new range and throwing weapons? It will be possible, it, yes. It yeah. will be possible. Yeah. So that's that's one of the main thrusts that we're trying to, to do here is increase what you can do uh, because, again, Neverwinter was kept alive for two decades by the fans who were modding and adding things and, and whatnot. Okay, we've just gone up a half a decade in the last three minutes. Listen. It's one and a half it's decades. Been a long this was time. 2002. For, for the people. We're rounding up. For the people at Bioware who were working on it in like 99. Okay. For them, okay. it's been almost two decades. Almost two decades. And they're that's fans good. too. They are fans. In fact, we have a lot of them here. Question from the audience. Does the updated content plug itself into the override directory, or do I need to do any shenanigans? Yeah, so the beauty of Neverwinter Nights was that it kind of already worked perfectly for a workshop in that uh, the engine was set up so that there's an override directory, and it checks there for content first before uh, checking the root game directory. 
So that's essentially what Workshop does. Is it pulls the content down and it just drops it in your override directory. And then when you boot up the game, it uh, pulls the content down. You can actually see it. Because the way Workshop works is it actually does the downloading of the game. And I'm getting really technical, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, yes, to answer your question, it dumps it in the override. Now, as much as there's the Steam Workshop, there's also been 15 years of content on Neverwinter Vault. That's right. Right, so you're not works. just limited to what's currently on the Steam Workshop. There's also Neverwinter Vault. You can get assets from there, drop those into your override directory, or follow the install instructions. And again, play with your friends, share the content, make games. Yeah, do it. Do it. Phil, what's in the make, box? Make the game. What is in the box? All right, hold on a second here. We're going we're gonna to take a look at this uh, Umber Hulk here. I'm just gonna let him out. No, I can't, dang. All right, let's open this box using this beautiful knife that, uh, Jonathan, I believe you forged this. Um, yeah, it was actually off of a uh, 3D printed template that I started with. Beautiful. How did you get the pattern on the blade? Uh, 3D models. Uh, I am a 3D modeler by trade, so I thought that, you know, by building this in 3D, I would kind of get the ergonomics of it. You know, Trent, I've seen what he does, and he traces his stuff out on paper and goes you completely know, old to, school to be honest, and pounds them. I mean, working with metal, kind of archaic. I mean, I... This is a new age tech. It is. Like, like this it's material. It's lightweight. It cuts just as well as a knife does. I mean, I could... Uh, here, we're going to let you guys see. Look at the, the pattern etched on the, uh, on the front of the blade there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't buy that. That's artisan craftsmanship. Well, if and you had a 3D printer, you could technically but you, you buy could, it. You could buy the devices necessary to create the object, but no one would, would willingly sell this. You wouldn't give this up, would you? I mean, this is going to stay in your family for generations. It is in my um, will. And then, of course, I see you brought the, the template that you used, the clear version. Um, this one is actually made of pure glass. So the, the benefit to going with the clear option is you can look at the structure, any right. imperfections. Right. Again, what Trent's doing, he's got this Damascus steel stuff. Mm -hmm. There's all these little mm -hmm. ripples and scales right. in it. He doesn't know what's really inside. Right. Very, for, for this, very I know what's inside. DC, you know? yeah. Just too much, it's a lot of sulfur, heat, you know, just uncivilized yeah. is yeah. what I would call it but others might have more choice terms. So 3D printing's the future. Beautiful stuff. And uh, this one, I'm sure, does a lot of extra damage because it's like those glass swords in Ultima. And uh, very, very beautiful stuff. Thank so, you. Uh, uh, you're welcome to use it to box. open a box. All right. So what does it say? It says, please give this to Phil. Thanks. THX. And it looks like it was shipped on the 13th. And uh, all right. So I'm assuming that this is some sort of bomb or threat to my person. You see how well that cuts? It does cut really well. You can tell it's made of glass. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this uh, <coughs> one here. Phil, you said last stream that you were going to end up with like eight hats. You were right, as you can see. I will hold this. One. Let's stack them. Each one smaller than the last. Two. This is beautiful. Thank you, whoever did this. I feel appreciated. Three, for those of you playing along at home. That's three. All right, we got number four coming up. I, I would have capped it off with that one. Well, you lack imagination. I'm sorry. I lost count. What are we at? 12? 13? Yep, got to be 13. All right, and then if you add the other two that I've already received, <gasps> this does indeed add up to eight. Oh, my God, how did they know? A mystery gift for you. Who did you give this to? It is someone in the office. They're trying to deceive me. See, for those of you unaware of the Beamdog lore, uh, every day I rip another page off of my cat calendar and I give it to a lucky recipient somewhere in the office. Often they don't know that they're going to receive it. They'll come back from lunch and find a little folded up picture of a cat on their keyboard. Um, but now, now I have to figure out who I gave a cat to on Tuesday, February the 13th. So I got some work ahead of me. We call them cat droppings, yeah. by the way. My neck hurts. Wow. All right. Let's keep playing Neverwinter. What else is new in this build, Jonathan? <laughs> That's a fine question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, you know, mesmerized by the hats right now. It's very hot in here all of a sudden. And I'm going to lie down. 
All right, so uh, in this build, which is uh, uploading to Beamdog right yep. now, uh, so as you're saying, we fixed a bunch of regressions. Um, oh yeah, numpad enter now works the same as the regular enter. Sorry about that. Um, oh, so the UI scaling. Actually, this is a big one. So if you look at my screen right now, I'm at playing at 1080p, but I have UI scaling set to 1x. So this is the original size of the uh, user interface for Neverwinter Nights. Jonathan is also playing at 1080p, but he has his UI set to 2x scaling. Now, obviously, the uh, UI scaling works better at 4K and higher resolutions, but this does mean that even at 1080p, if you've got you know your giant 24-inch uh, monitor, you'll be able to uh, play comfortably. Now, there are some issues that we're going to be fixing up uh, as we roll out this feature. So in the main menus of Neverwinter, there are some screens that get cut off at the top and bottom because the UI is scaled to 2x. So what we're going to do there is likely change those screens to work properly at 2x, and then uh, everything should work fine. Yeah, so if you travel back in time and you imagine when people had the big CRT monitors that four were 4x3, three, 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 yeah. well, modern day, most things are 16x9. So what ends up happening when we're scaling Neverwinter Nights up for modern tech, we basically have to take that 4x3 image and scale it up to 16x9. As a result, sometimes you get the letterboxing effect where we're actually cutting off the top and the bottom of a couple of the screens. <coughs> but for the most part, it not an issue. Good. If your resolution is 1920 by 1200 and higher, zero issues. It's only at 1920, 1080 that uh, we have to solve for right yeah. now. Uh, so where are you walking, Phil? Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to finish the dang training, which I've done 20 times, and I forget every single time, so that we can leave and then go uh, shoot some water Davian creatures. And by shoot, I mean pet. Not the dryad. Okay, where so... Are you? You're over there. Okay, I'm going to head yep. to you. Hail, traveler. Wouldst thou liketh to joineth my party, F? Oh, you're already in my party. I Let's am. roll, buddy. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I feel like we need to complete our training. I got to talk to uh, this guy over here. Hello, Hewitt. All right, we already did his thing. We got to go talk to uh, Herbin. That's not Herbin. Herbin, get over here. That's Donnelly, Urban. These are familiar friends, aren't they, Phil? Urban. See, there's a reason everybody speeds through the tutorial and can never remember anybody. Me already know what me need about combat. So Not I think interested. that's another question that we have here on the board is in terms of our Trello side of things. Oh, yeah. Shall we uh, so take a look at the Trello? Yeah. Do you want to pop over to Let's Trello? Let's do that. And... Um, so for those that are you know joining in or aren't familiar with it, so Trello board is kind of one of our main ways of interfacing with the general public on Neverwinter Nights. It's our way of basically seeding questions for people to say, hey, we really want this feature. People get to vote on it. And based on that, internally, we evaluate you know, based on our resources and our time and just how many people want this if that's something that we are going to start working on next. So that's what we're doing with the Trello board. We have one which is our active, and then we also have our public, where people are voting as they go. That's right. So the Trello cards are basically uh, topics, and by subscribing to them, that's essentially like voting. That's like voting. Yeah, so that's how we kind of decide what we're going to work on next. So if we take a look at the Trello board right now, we can see... Uh, Let's take a look at the icebox. The icebox is stuff that we need more information on or stuff that we can't work on right now or stuff that we'd like to work on, but it's going to be a longer term thing. Uh, needs more discussion means we need more information from you guys. What are you looking for in this feature? Uh, so for example, one of the topics that we've been chatting about for weeks now is the parry system in Neverwinter Nights. Now, uh, Perry right now in Neverwinter Nights behaves in some interesting ways, and there are some suggestions as to how to fix Perry. Um, but we actually have to settle on what we want to do with Perry and make a decision that everyone in the community is comfortable with. Because while Perry might be considered broken by some, it's also behaved in a certain way for a very, very long time. And if we're going to change that behavior, we better change it for a really, really good reason. And that's actually a really good point. We don't want to change anything just because we want community consensus and direction in terms of does this s serve the community as a whole? And does it serve the larger goals of opening up the code for Neverwinter Nights so we can extend the functionality? 
Uh, question from the audience. Is there a GOG release date for Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition? Uh, at present, no, but uh, I'm pretty sure Cam and Trent are working on that right now. So uh, they can we, say if hi. If we go to a live feed of them drinking at the uh, hotel lobby bar, uh, you'll be able to see them wheel and deal. Do we have that feed? No, we don't. All right, sorry, folks. Question for the audience. What Trello card on the roadmap are you most excited about? Um, I actually have a kind of a weird one, and it's tree-type font support because... I don't like the font right now, and I'd love to be able to replace it with whatever I please. So TTS Galahad support. is a fine font. Galahad is whatever. Um, so that's also going to make it a lot easier for foreign language support to work properly. So uh, yeah, I'm looking for TTF support. Other than that, uh, getting some HD character models into the workshop is pretty cool, and I'm excited for that as well. What about you, Jonathan? I'm looking forward to opening up the UI for the end user. Oh, yeah, that is actually a big one. Right. I, I think once we can do that and kind of open up a lot of that functionality, we'll see a lot more stuff in the workshop where people that are running Persistent Worlds have their own shells and skins for the UI, and that basically means people can tailor Neverwinter to what they want. I like that. And right now, the more we can unhard code the UI, I think the more people are going to benefit in the end. Hey, that means that you and I can start on our Dune RPG total conversion for Neverwinter. Is my screen share on? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Another useful feature of the Trello is that uh, we got our patch notes in here. So uh, if you head over to the Trello, you can see what features, fixes, regression fixes, etc., shipped with each version. So for example, shipped with patch 8159, we can take a look at that. Look at the features. Hey, we added per vertex color streams, uh, servers should now enumerate and connect faster, blah, 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 blah. So that's where you're going to go to get all of your patch information. Um, question from the audience about patches. After release, how long will we get update? Or actually, sorry, the question is how often will we be getting updates? OK, so the plan right now is We've been doing a Head Start program for you know the last few months. And on Steam side of things, we've had what we've referred to as the development branch. So going forward, we're always going to have a stable version. And then we're going to have a development branch where, you know what, quite frankly, we're going to break shit. It's, we're going to go in. We're going to try some things. We're going to break a few things. It's going to be unstable. But that's going to be where all those cutting edge features are. Once those things are stable and working and we're happy with it, then we're looking at rolling out new content when it's ready. Mm -hmm. uh, it's n right now, we've been on a cadence of every two weeks we've been rolling out content. In terms of you know not making it so everyone has to upgrade constantly on their persistent worlds, mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking it, we're going to stagger that out a little bit longer. But the short answer is TBD, but it's not going to be every week. Sorry, I'm just uh, distracting people here. Continue. This is interesting. OK, so what else do we have for questions up here? Are there plans to make the override folder in Neverwinter Nights work like it did in Neverwinter Nights 2, i.e. allow the Neverwinter Nights game to read a folder inside of the override folder? Does it not do that already? It sort of does, but I think that wow, could so be something that someone could put on the Trello board. Mm -hmm. Any news on a server binary for 8165? I'd have to field that out to the development team. We'll right. get back to you on that one. Can we please get gradations 1.25 and 1.5? I'll let you answer this one because I don't quite understand it. What are gradations? Yeah. What are gradations, buddy? Next question. After you're happy with all of the more modern D&D games, Neverwinter Nights, Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate, PST, and their enhanced editions, what's next? Would you consider enhancing the famous classics such as Pool of Radiance? Well, well, of course, well, there's well, always the Arcanum discussion, which Okay, uh, you I have that discussion, because I'm going to step out of this question, because I don't think I'm ever going to be fully happy with Neverwinter Nights. We're going to keep supporting and extending it and telling new stories. So I, I'm basically on Neverwinter Nights for a long time. That's, that's fair. Um, so uh, I think there's still quite a bit of work to be done in the Infinity Engine games, and of course, Neverwinter has a long road ahead of it. Beamdog, generally, uh, we are still very interested in upgrading and enhancing old games. I can't really comment on any specific projects that we might have in mind, but all I can tell you is, A, we love classic games, we love D&D, &D, and uh, we love developing games. So you will see stuff from us in the future, and it will probably be something up your alley. 
Uh, the question about okay. gradations was gradations on UI scaling. So rather than stepping it 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, can I scale right. it uh, on a more granular level? So in order for that to happen, you get your wish, and true type fonts needs to be in there. So technical side of things, right now we're rendering our fonts to a texture sheet, and then when we do the UI scaling, then it's going to have to interpolate that new scale, and then we get a bunch of aliasing issues, and things look blurry as hell. So... True type fonts, a lot more control over the scaling. So that needs to be in before UI scaling on just kind of the gradations can happen. Yeah. So have you uh, figured out how to get the hell out of this tutorial area yet? Sorry, I was mesmerized by the hats. And I my head is so go. hot right now. I feel like this is soaking up all of the liquid in my body. There is snow outside. There so. is snow. We got a big dump of snow, folks. And uh, no one's happy about it, I'll tell you that much. After you've spent a few years living in Canada, snow stops being, oh, it's so white and pretty. Ah, how pure. To, I can't believe that Mother Nature just squatted over the city again and ruined my day. All right, question from the audience. Can we import Pool of Radiance into the Infinity or Aurora engines? I mean, somebody ported Ultima 6 to Neverwinter, so I'm pretty sure you can do what you please. Uh, I would actually love to see a Pool of Radiance module in Neverwinter. You should do that. It'd be fun. Why do I always have to be the rational one? <laughs> yes, you can, but check your local laws for copyright. <laughs> um, yeah, people have done that with you know Baldur's Gate, et cetera, et cetera. And whenever you yeah, undertake yeah. something like that, you just have to be aware that you know someone somewhere along the lines might say, "Hey, we own that audio file. You can't do it." But as players, please make content. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question yeah. for the audience. Would it be possible to have a stream where people from Bcom, Codename, and Beamdog get together for a brief adventure in Neverwinter Nights? It would be possible. Hmm. Um, we're actually trying to set some stuff like that up for launch day. What actually. are you doing Tuesday? Yeah, what am Wh I doing? What are Tuesday? they doing Tuesday? What are you guys doing Tuesday? So uh, next Tuesday, we're going to be doing a special launch day stream. We probably should have said this earlier. I think um, yeah, we're going to be playing Neverwinter Nights. We're going to get a whole bunch of people in here. We're setting up a persistent world server with our friends at uh, Aerolith. And, uh, yeah, you're going to hang out with us all day during this, the, the launch. And uh, there will be some uh, guests, perhaps, from the Wizards of the Coast branch of the family. And uh, it should be a good time. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be happening during a work day. So you're going to have to take some time off. But you guys are cool with that, T right? Tell them I said it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. Whatever. All right, let's, uh, let's take a gander at Jonathan's screen. I'm just going to follow your character around and harass you until you guide me out of this accursed tutorial. Help, help me. Get get me out of here. Why do you want to get out of here, Phil? This is a wonderful area. Because it's, it's time for school to end. we got to graduate, man. Graduate to the Water Davian creatures. Ooh, what's in here? You're going over there? You're checking that out? Oh, the barn's locked. We need the proper key. <gasps> but where could it be? Do pray tell. I, I, I really don't know. I forgot. Do you know? So how do non-Steam users get the new stuff? How so by the new the stuff, new you're stuff? talking about mods and things like that. Um, we're, as I said earlier, uh, there is the Neverwinter Vault. Um, that's kind of where the default place that people have been grabbing stuff over the years. Right now, I've been uploading some stuff into the Steam Workshop. Haven't been mirroring it over to the vault, but that's something that we will be doing. Yeah. So the, the plan in the future, and this is just the plan right now, we haven't uh, committed to it yet. Uh, so we added workshop support. And then if we add something like you can change what that points to, to say Neverwinter Vault, we might be able to add that functionality to non-Steam users. It's something that we have to investigate and check on. But ideally, that's what you'd be able to do. So if you have it on Steam, you can point it at the workshop or somewhere else. If you didn't get it on Steam, you can point it you know, somewhere. But that's a feature that we need to test and make sure it's going to work. Another question from the audience. Are there going to be future updates that cause the disconnect between the Beamdog client and the Steam client? I'm thinking about for Persistent Worlds. No, so the plan here is once the game is out, whenever we do a big client update, we would push it out to Beamdog and Steam at the same time, uh, primarily because we want to maintain that cross-compatibility between the two. 
So no, we're, we're going to try and keep them in lockstep. And that, that rings true for any platform that we would bring uh, Neverwinter Nights to. Today um, was the exception. I think this is the first time that we've kind of been out of step. Uh, we had some Linux things that I wanted oh to push yeah. in yesterday, and so we pushed that just to Steam, just so we could kind of sort out a few things. Uh, so then Linux, we're yeah. So uh, Linux support will be coming along right away here, but uh, it's it's funny because I remember when Neverwinter Nights first came out, I was a, uh, a pimply-faced youth who ran Linux on his main computer, and I was like, yes, finally, a AAA game that runs on Linux. And then Neverwinter shipped, and they're like, yeah, sorry, the uh, Linux binaries are going to be TBD. And then three to four months later of me constantly refreshing that stupid Linux binary page that had the picture of the adventurer hanging out with the penguin, they finally put up the binaries, and I was able to play. But the initial release of the binaries required you to install the game on a Windows machine, copy the data over to your Linux box, and then grab the Linux binaries. So thanks, Trent. I appreciate it. Anyways, question from the audience. I didn't buy Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition yet because a friend who is an AMD user had a crash every time he opened the tool set. Is this still a bug? Is that still a bug? Um, nope. Stuff. We've actually migrated the tool set over to a newer, newer version of Borland, and hey. that seems to have sorted out a number of AMD issues. So uh, previously on the stream, you may have heard about us discussing the difficulties of getting the Neverwinter Nights tool set compiling again because it was using Borland C++ Builder 3rd uh, Century Edition. Um, so we managed to successfully update it, and now we can actually start rolling in updates to the tool set, one of which was the fix for that AMD crash. All right, we got 15 minutes left. I think we should give away another shirt. What do you think? I think we should. I think we should give away two shirts today. we should give away... Right now, two shirts. Two shirts. Dos. That means two. In French. Speaking of which, um, Neverwinter Nights is also available in Spanish. Hey, what languages is the game going to ship on? I believe there are eight languages. There's German, Polish, Spanish, as I just mentioned, Italian, it was P English. Figs. Remember P figs. Okay, go through the P figs. French. P for Polish. E for English. F for fun. French, I for Italian, <laughs> G for German, and S for Sriracha? Spanish. Yes. Espanol. Un calor. So E again. Yes, E, yes. All right, so uh, yeah, P figs. We're going out the door with P figs. Although I believe for Italian, it's text only. Yes. Yeah, so Italian doesn't have any VO, it's text only. So if you speak Italian, I'm sorry, but uh, you're just going to have to suffer through the Spanish version. I know it's not the same, but you get the gist of it. All right, two t-shirts, Cablefish, and... Why did you take the easy one? Because Trinital Red. Trintal Red? Trintal, Trinital Red. Trinital? Sony Trinitrol Red. Trinitron. Trinary? Trine? Trine. Do you Trine? Trine, Trine it. Oh, Trine was a great game. That was a good... Was there a Trine 3? I remember Trine 1 and 2. Mm, was there a Trine 3? Yeah. There was? Yeah. Wasn't that good? No. That's uh, they, they've got a new game, which actually plays a lot like Magicka. It's a top-down. Magicka. There's another game. fun one. Magicka's good. Go play Magicka. It's fun. All right. You guys want shirts. Question from the audience. What are the best and worst uses of a wish spell? I wish for bad things to happen. I wish I wasn't asked that question. Hey. <laughs> How, how, that didn't would, work. how would you approach a wish spell? So first of all, with wish, like you have to phrase it just crystal clear without any you know interpretation because genies are dicks. So and, you're uh, a genie, I'm and a genie. this is your genie hat. Yes. Okay. I will grant you one D and D related wish, Jonathan. What will it be? Before mm. you put me back in this iron flask. Spelljammer is the main campaign setting. You got it, buddy. All right, folks, you heard it her first here. Do uh, we have a blink, blink, blink sound effect you can play? <laughs> Forgotten Realms is on the way out, and Spelljammer is on the way in. That's right, folks, you heard it here. All right, uh, question for the audience. With the UI rewrite being a little far off, is there any way to shift the conversation window over to the side? I played a mod this week that had it moved over to the right, so it seems doable as is. How do I do this? Uh, I can't explain how to do it on the stream because I personally do not know how, but uh, we do have some documentation we're kicking up as to how to rip apart the existing UI. 
Yeah. And one of the things that we've done, because a lot of, you know, a lot of us are just, we've played Neverwinter Nights forever, right? So one of the things we have done is we've sat down with, you know, kids, daycares, you know, elderly people that have never seen Neverwinter Nights, put it in front of them and say, you know, s to watch how they play it. And one of the things that has come up time and time again, people grab the top bar on anything and try to move the window because that's kind of an expected behavior in this day and age. Since, you know, 1984. Okay. <laughs> So because of that, it's one of those features that, you know, c pops up a lot, especially on the Trello board. Yep. And that's one of the things that we're looking at doing. So, yes, we want to be able to move some of those menus around. Yeah, ideally, you'd be able to move them live in game and not have to, like, mess with the config file. So yep. that's kind of what we're aiming and at. And as we start unlocking a lot of those hard-coded features that are inside of Neverwinter mm -hmm. Nights, we're, we'll be opening up that functionality. Uh, another question from the audience. In one of your streams, you mentioned a community contest to get Neverwinter Nights avatars. Any news on that? Yes, actually. Good, because I wasn't on that live stream, an so you another, made promises. Another thing that we probably should have mentioned about this uh, live stream on Tuesday is that uh, we might be running a little bit of a contest. For the winner of said contest, we'll have their photograph turned into a fantasy D&D &D portrait suitable for use with Neverwinter Nights or perhaps Baldur's Gate. Um, the details of said contest are TBD, but tune in on Tuesday for your chance to be turned into a fantasy hero or villain of your choice. I'm excited for it. I hope I win. I'm going to stuff that ballot. I already am. Because my portrait... Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at your screen here. Who's that gentleman in the top right? Look at that schlock of blonde hair. Yeah. So that is... Uh, that is me. So we had... Uh, when we did up our portraits, a few of the staff and a few of the people in the community, we basically had portraits made of them. So... Let's take a uh, gander at the existing portraits that uh, ship and, with uh, the Winter Nights. Yeah, I kicked you out because I want to uh, create a character. And I shaved to have that portrait done. <laughs> what a waste. All right, so uh, Neverwinter actually ships with a lot of portraits. And over the years, more and more and more and more portraits got added with each patch that was released. And uh, if you take a look at the Beamdog version, you can see that you already get a few more additional portraits. So we've got uh, this guy, this guy, Jonathan, of course, this guy, and uh, this guy. And these are all uh, people from the office that we did uh, photographs of. We took pictures of them. Uh, I believe this was Nat Jones. Uh, who is this? Was this Jason? I think that was Jason. Or maybe that was Ben. I'm not sure. That's, of course, you, Jonathan. That is me. Uh, this is Trent. And we didn't actually have to touch up the photo. And uh, this is our buddy Keith. And, of course, this is the drow that lives in the alley behind Beamdog. Um, Crackhead. Well, you know, you, you give him some uh, skooma dust, and he, he becomes your friend. Wrong game. Wrong game. Sorry about that, folks. Anyways, question for the audience. After the game release, will we still have a Twitch stream every Friday? I think that's the plan. That is the plan. Um, I, I am under the, the impression that I have been cursed with hosting the Beamdog show every Friday until such time that I either die or uh, have the curse removed. Now, uh, the witch that were clear on the condition of removing the curse, so I've been out there kissing every frog, uh, waking up every girl I can see. Um, I, uh, I rescued some people from an order and just nothing so I don't know what the deal is but you're just gonna see me here every Friday until I figure it out question from the audience will there be a borderless window mode for never winter nights not at launch but uh, please add it to the Trello that is something that I actually would like because uh, I'm weird like that but also back to the live stream on Fridays yes yeah. live streams are gonna be on Fridays um, what we will be doing more so though is community content we want to go through the steam workshop see what's out there, basically showcase that on the live stream and become a lot more engaged with the community on that side that yeah. side of things to bring what you've done front and center. We can showcase it so other people are going to come in, download your mods, and play. And then we'll be running games with on Persistent Worlds and other players as well. So the format generally is going to be kind of what we've been doing so far. So we'll start off with some Beamdog news. We'll talk about uh, Infinity Engine and Neverwinter Night stuff. And then uh, we'll launch into new features that we might have shipped recently for Neverwinter. And then uh, we get into showing off the community stuff, playing with people on Persistent Worlds, and uh, having a great time. And uh, the show, of course, will be changed. The name of it will be changed to the uh, Laser Cat Hour. And uh, I will, of course, continue to be the host. So uh, 
I believe that's all the news we have for this week. There's the new version of Neverwinter Nights coming right now on Beamdog, and if you're on Steam, you can grab this latest version already. So, uh, Seed of Dragon Spear Collector's Edition is still on sale. This is the last day. Please go buy it for $99.99. Planescape Tormund Enhanced Edition is now available on Twitch. They have a digital distribution client that they you can do. get and uh, pull the game down. GOG has a huge sell sale with a bunch of fantastic deals, including all of the Infinity Engine games that you can get in on right now. And uh, Neverwinter Nights is launching on Steam on March 27th. We will have a live stream. There will be a contest. You'll be able to play with us. <coughs> There's going to be a persistent world server. It's going to be a huge online party. On April 1st, Beamdog is doing a very special Easter Sunday stream starring Holly Conrad, myself, and of course our fearless Alexi. And we're going to be talking about a uh, secret little project that Beamdog has been working on. And uh, I think that's just about it. Of course, uh, we mentioned earlier, Holly's character Strix is going to be in uh, Idol Champions. Yeah. So look for her there. One thing I'd like to add, though. Yes, the game is out on March 27th on Steam. But you can also go to Beamdog.com, right. buy the game today, which also gets you access to the Steam build. Mm -hmm. So it's a weekend. What's stopping you from buying the game today? And all the other people are going to be coming in through Steam on Tuesday. Yeah, so if you buy in Beamdog, you will get a Steam key. So there's uh, really nothing to lose here. Uh, yep. It's a good time. Get in there, get the key, and play with your friends. Try out that Steam overlay. We have one final question from the audience before we break here. Um, forgive me if I already asked. Are you adding more default portraits? Actually, yes. Uh, if you were watching a few minutes ago, we showed off some new uh, portraits that are shipping with the base game. And uh, as time goes on, we'll see about adding more. But right now, the answer is yes. There are more portraits available in Neverwinter Enhanced Edition. And, uh, oh, there was one extra question. Phil, what level of character do you play? I need to know for the Kill Phil module. Um, typically, I, like, I kind of like the low to mid-range levels. Like 5 to 12 is kind of the sweet spot for me of, like, not That's where too it's fun. weak, not so overpowered that, like, combat isn't really a huge challenge anymore because you have too many options. I find that while D and D is super cool and very power fantasy heavy at you know level thirty to forty, it's also not so much of a challenge anymore. Uh, all right, one final question uh, regarding next Tuesday: Will Beamdog have its own persistent world server? We're actually going to be working with the uh, the Earth people to uh, set up a server, so we'll be joining them on Tuesday. But uh, in the future, who knows? Maybe I'll set up a little uh, fight club server just for me, and I'll make all you people fight for me. And I'll role play live as Baloth the Entertainer. All right, folks. We're going to wrap it up. This has been a fantastic Friday, and it's going to be an even better Tuesday next week, of course. Yes. Because Neverwinter Nights releases on the 27th. We will see you in four days. And until then, go buy the game and play it. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. Go do it. Do it. Okay, bye. And bye.